Today's case is a 10 year old dog that had a swelling in his neck area noted by his owners. He's brought into his veterinarian. The veterinarian took a look and sure enough, there was this non-discreet kind of fluctuant swelling in his submandibular area, which they aspirated and that's what we're looking at. There's a lot going on in this sample, but hopefully right away you can see that there are these pools of this blue amorphous material. There's also inflammatory cells. So up there we've got those macrophages that have vacuoles and we've got some neutrophils here too. They're hard to see at this objective, but trust me, those are neutrophils. We've also got some blood. These little things are red blood cells are just pain kind, uh, stain kind of pale. One other thing to notice here is that the red blood cells, especially it's easier to tell here, they are doing this thing called wind drawing where they're lining up in these rows. And so it's subtle, but if you look closely, you can see everything in here is kind of lining up in rows. That happens when we are dealing with a viscous material. It's called windrowing, and it is seen with things like joint fluids, saliva, some tumors make viscous material. So correlating this all together in this location, this is a salivary mucosal. Saliva is viscous, that explains the windrowing. This here is saliva, it's free in this space, which it shouldn't be, that makes it a salivary mucosal, and inflammatory cells are very common. It's also quite common for these salivary mucosils to have some internal hemorrhaging. And so here in this multinucleated macrophage, you can see this little rhomboid crystal, orange crystal there, which is a hematoidin crystal, which is a red blood cell breakdown product and consistent with hemorrhage.